I like to use this slide uh, because it reads really well from the bottom up. And we'll talk about some of the value that gets unlocked uh, at each of these stages. You've probably heard Autodesk talk about data models. Uh, certainly it was presented at Autodesk University two weeks ago in all of the different keynote presentations. And really this is a foundational step in Autodesk data strategy, because as soon as we start to unlock data from files, then we start to make it transparent and accessible to you, to customers, uh, to start using uh, in new and innovative ways. So this is the first kind of unlock of value. Uh, the next is where you see our industry clouds start to layer on experiences on top of the data. And so Fusion, Forma, and Flow um, for each of the industries that Autodesk serve are each presenting new clients and uh, new just application experiences uh, based on uh, transparent granular data that's available through the cloud. And of course, this is meant to delight customers with that new experience. And then the, the best part is when you start working differently, when your workflows and your industry start to be disrupted by new experiences to achieve workflows that are requirements in order to deliver the work that you need to do. Uh, so you'll see this in a variety of workflows and in a variety of different um, disciplines, uh, not just designers, uh, not just engineers, uh, but the whole lifespan of a project and all the personas involved in it. And over time, uh, of course, we'll be delivering customer value iteratively. This data unlock at the lower level is already started. Um, I mentioned GA. Uh, a lot of our products are starting to become generally available so that they can impact your project work you're doing today. And um, one of those is data exchange as a service. And so this is, we talk about it as convergence, but we also talk about it as third party applications participating in all of the Autodesk experiences you're already used to. Uh, so you can see Rhino is here, Power BI is here, uh, a number of different um, key applications that are not Autodesk properties can now plug in to the Autodesk ecosystem. Um, to me, this is a big mindset shift that Autodesk is acknowledging we are not going to be able to provide all of the tools necessary for you to get your work done. So instead, we should be an open platform that invites other applications into it and allows data to go out of Autodesk ecosystem as well as into Autodesk ecosystem. So we'll spend most of the day talking about data exchange. And um, really, it's one of the interoperability products that Autodesk is focused on, um, not necessarily as an authoring tool like Revit or like Forma, but instead uh, facilitating the exchange of information between a variety of tools. And this diagram tries to indicate a one-to-many interoperability pattern that data coming from Revit can be read into Inventor or into Power BI or into Rhino. You don't have to do a special export for each of those different workflows you have in mind. Rather, you can just create a data exchange and then read it into n number of applications. Uh, so that's really this first bullet we're getting at, a connected ecosystem of a variety of tools that can read parameters and geometry, depending on what the workflow is you have in mind. And all of these workflows are gated so that it provides some control uh, as data flows across boundaries. So we recognize um, going between different companies you're not wanting to share your entire model. Instead, you're wanting to share subsets of the model. And you're wanting to be in charge of when that share happens, either as part of a publish action or um, when uh, an authoring customer is in an app and making a decision they're ready to share. And that last bullet is about uh, work packaging and the subset of information that does get shared. Um, your best experience with data exchange is going to include a subset of the model that's intended for a specific person. So that may be breaking down a model by category or breaking down a model by level or breaking down a model by phase. Um, you're gonna to wanna to put together a package that's meaningful. That's not the entirety of the model. I would not say data exchange is well suited for sharing the entirety of your RVT file over to somebody else, but rather breaking it down by 
Revit view uh, filters. And so this is the last slide for me and then I'll pass it over to Cesar to start showing some, some great examples. Uh, people often ask, you know, how is this different from importing files? How is this different from linking files? And there are several different distinctions to make. Um, first of all, transparent granular data as opposed to data that's locked inside of files gives you a chance to work with subsets and enables you to work through the cloud. So you're not sending, emailing, faxing uh, files back and forth to each other anymore. Now you can work at a more refined level than you've ever been able to work before. Um, this makes updating much simpler as well as durable. And it allows you to send this data to many different places instead of just point to point kind of shares. And as we mentioned, this is set up very well for low trust experiences, but of course it can be used by uh, individuals within the same company just sharing data with each other. So in order to see some of this in action, let's pass it over to Cesar. Thanks, Tobias. To understand the power and the benefits of that exchanges, I will demonstrate the value using one of our early workflows, the data exchange connector for Revit and Rhino. Using data exchanges, user can share specific views, geometry, and layers of different authoring environments, allowing them to work on relevant subsets. This is an example when an architect completed her design development working in Revit and crafting the design development details. But she has a dilemma. She doesn't want to share the entire model because it's complexity and sensitivity of information. So instead, she decided to isolate a specific subset of the building that is relevant for the collaborators using the, the, the data exchange. This isolated portion of the model is stored with control permissions in the folder uh, structure of Autodesk Docs, allowing her to manage the shared data independently from the original model. That exchange retained the hierarchy of the model structure. Uh, so she's confident that the consultant on their end will receive the right information. This consultant has been assigned to the project with the task of designing a canopy design using Rhino to facilitate the collaboration. He get access to the architect data exchange. Um, with it access, he loads it into their Rhino design. Um, and just focus on the area that's pertinent to his work. This targeted approach saves him time, uh, but also uh, he will be working with the most current information available. As he creates this model, he finalized this elegant design canopy and make it available as a design exchange for the architects. Uh, these, that exchange allows easy previewing and sharing, enable the architect to quickly access it, review it, and update it. Uh, the architect navigates to the consultant shared design with anticipation loaded into the Revit environment uh, and coordinate the attachment locations with the building. Um, next, you know, another actor like the fabricator can step into the team to bring the canopy design into inventor and then utilizing uh, that exchange capability, he imports the canopy seamlessly. This integration allow him to create uh, essential data into Power BI and create detailed analysis for quantification and costs associated with the canopy. And the entire process from the start to the beginning, it's uh, facilitated by this ability to create that exchanges, showcasing how we can collaboratively and efficiently exchange information across different disciplines. 